Hello, you're watching the news from ITN. I'm Helen Croydon. Coming up, the 12 days of Christmas could be the soundtrack to travel misery this year as BA staff vote for strike action. Friends and close aides to Silvio Berlusconi pay him a visit in hospital as he recovers from a broken nose after an attack yesterday. Simon Cowell and ITV are celebrating record viewing figures after Joe McKeldry won X Factor. All that, plus the latest business, sport and the showbiz here on the ITN News Channel. First though, a look at today's top stories. British Airways cabin crew have voted overwhelmingly in favour of a series of strikes over the Christmas period. Staff and union leaders are unhappy about job cuts and changes to employee contracts. Dominic Mason reports. It could be the stuff Christmas nightmares are made of. VA cabin crews say they'll stage 12 days of strikes over the holiday season, action that will mean travel misery for thousands of people. But the Union Unite says support for its planned action is overwhelming. Assistant General Secretary Len McCluskey says his members voted with a 9-1 to majority. I can advise that the result of that ballot was over an 80% turnout in the ballot and 92.5% of our members have voted for strike action. Uh, that's an incredibly high uh, return. Unions are unhappy about job cuts and changes to staff contracts. Last month, the airline said it was chopped 1,200 posts in an attempt to slash costs, hoping to ride out its dire financial situation. In the first half of the year, it lost 292 million pounds, the worst first half losses in the company's history. These strikes will cost the airline tens of millions more, hitting flights at one of the busiest times of the year. There will now be an anxious wait for the travelling public, as it's hoped management and unions will go back to the negotiating table. But with both sides firmly entrenched, hopes of a breakthrough are looking bleak. Meanwhile, BA's chief executive, Willie Walsh, has slammed what he calls a return to 1970s-style trade unionism. I think the action that we've seen from Unite is, uh, by any standards, a gross overreaction to what I consider to be minor changes that British Airways has introduced. And these are changes that we've introduced in the interest of securing the British Airways business for the future. Prime Minister Gordon Brown has sent a message of sympathy to his Italian counterpart Silvio Berlusconi after he was attacked at a rally in Milan last night. The 73-year-old Italian PM was struck in the face by a statuette and is said to be making good recovery in hospital. Meanwhile, speculations growing that his attack was spurred by a climate of hatred which is splitting Italy apart. Here's more. He shakes hands and signs autographs amid cries of bravo and then suddenly <laughs> Silvio Berlusconi is hit in the face with a statuette. Confusion reigns and then eventually the Prime Minister is led into his car. He immediately gets out, apparently to show that he wasn't that injured. Mr Berlusconi spent the night in hospital and has been visited by friends and close political aides. His UK counterpart, Gordon Brown, has sent a message of sympathy and he's expressed his shock at the attack. Initial reports thought the attacker held the statuette in his hand, but closer analysis shows it could have been thrown. The dramatic attack left the Italian Prime Minister with a fractured nose, two broken teeth and a lip injury. Italian commentators have been asking whether the dramatic physical attack on their Prime Minister was prompted by months of escalating political tension and a climate of hatred that's splitting the country. Mr Berlusconi is entangled in a sex scandal and faces criminal trials in Milan after an immunity law was overturned earlier this year. He's faced protests with tens of thousands marching in Rome earlier this month to demand his resignation. A 42-year-old man with a history of psychological problems has been arrested over the incident. All 75 hostages from a jungle village in the Philippines have now been released. They were snatched from their homes and businesses last week after a rival clan stormed the village. They demanded that previous murder trials be heard in a tribal court. 
Villagers in the tranquil Filipino town of New Marsin await the arrival of the freed hostages. Wearing white t-shirts to symbolize their freedom, the captives gathered in their village social hall to recount their ordeal. 75 people, including whole families, were taken captive last Thursday when tribesmen went from house to house with guns to collect them. Bibang Alaba was one of them. Even just on the way to the hostage site, we were already frightened. I looked around me and I saw my son and my husband, and we didn't know where we were heading. The captives were released in batches, first the children, then the women. The final 46 out of an initial 75 have now been freed after negotiations with the gunmen were finalised. The armed hostage takers wanted murder cases against them, transferred to a tribal court. Olympio Alaba was one of the last to come home. We were so relieved when we heard the news that we were free. Thank God we thought. We were crying on the way back and until we reached our homes we were in tears. He was so happy that we were released. The hostage takers are now in the custody of the provincial government, waiting for their murder cases to be heard in a tribal court. Clan wards known locally as Rido are common in the south of the Philippines. Joe McKeldry must be the happiest teenager in the country today. The 18-year-old's the new X Factor champion. It was terrifying. I mean, I was obviously... I was so happy to have got where I had got to, but, you know, I wanted just to go the full way and win it. And I was standing out there and I was just thinking, oh, it's not me, it's not me, it's not me. And then when they said my name, I, as you could probably see, me and Cheryl just kind of pushed away from each other and jumped around like idiots. But there's speculation that Robbie Williams or Spice Girl Mel B could be in one of the judges' seats next year. Joe's only just been crowned X Factor champion 2009, but rumours are already rife about the next series. Judge Danny Minogue's always the centre of much speculation, and this time is no different. Even before the final, there were reports she wouldn't return for 2010 as she wanted to start a family with boyfriend Chris Smith. Names in the frame as possible replacements on the panel include former Destiny's Child singer Kelly Rowland, Robbie Williams and Spice Girl Mel B. The man behind the X Factor, Simon Cowell, has even even confirmed there have been talks with Mel and she wants to do the show. She's not the first Spice Girl to be linked to the reality programme. It was rumoured last year Victoria Beckham was being lined up before she made a guest appearance on American Idol. Simon might have more than one seat to fill next year. If the rumours are to be believed, Danny's not the only one looking to have a baby. Cheryl is also reportedly ready to start a family with husband Ashley Cole. But until much closer to the start of next series, nothing will be confirmed by the X Factor camp and the rumour as back and forth will continue. Another report out says the Danny speculation is all rubbish and she hasn't even talked to anyone about her 2010 contract, let alone already quit. And with other rumours, Simon Cowell is ready to launch the X Factor in LA, Las Vegas and maybe even Afghanistan. Maybe Mel B and co are being lined up to front one of those shows. Everything you need to know about Christmas in one place. Which celebrity would you most like to kiss under the mistletoe? <laughs> Which celebrity should Santa leave off his list this year? Come to ITN's Christmas channel for the sublime. New Year's is with friends, I think, and usually it's Christmas to family. And the ridiculous. Santa's elves work tirelessly in the run-up to Christmas to bring joy to every child, but where does that leave them for the rest of the year? <laughs> YouTube.com slash the Christmas channel where the wise men will be heading this season. Chestnuts roasting on an open fire. <laughs> A quick summary of the story so far. British Airways staff have voted overwhelmingly for 12 days of strikes over Christmas. Italy's Prime Minister Silvio Berlusconi has received visitors in hospital and is said to be making a good recovery after being attacked with a statuette. The Philippines' hostage crisis is over. All 75 people snatched from a jungle village in the Southeast Asian country have been released. And while X Factor champion Joe McEldry celebrates his victory, there's speculation that Robbie Williams or Spice Girl star Mel B could replace Danny Minogue as a judge on the show. 
Ed Miliband says environment ministers must get their act together to put international talks to tackle climate change back on track and deal with unresolved issues. Speaking in Copenhagen, the climate change secretary urged delegates to make progress before national leaders arrive later this week. I don't think that plan B is a good option at all. In other words, putting it off, um, I don't think is an answer. Because as I was saying to someone last night, this isn't going to get any easier. The Prime Minister has announced a £150 million package to tackle roadside bombs in Afghanistan. There'll be an extra £10 million for handheld mine detectors and long-term investment in dealing with improvised explosive devices. Mr Brown says his weekend trip to the Afghan war zone showed him there's hard fighting ahead. The man convicted of murdering 15-year-old Vicky Hamilton is on trial accused of killing another teenage girl. Peter Tobin, who's 65, denies murdering 18-year-old Dina McNichol from Essex. The jury has been told that the handyman is serving a life sentence for the murder of Vicky. Both girls vanished in 1991 and their bodies were found when police searched the garden of a house in Margate in Kent, where Tobin lived in the early 1990s. A teenager is facing jail after he poured bleach over a woman who asked him to be quiet in a cinema. The 16-year-old, who can't be named, became annoyed with Annette Warden after she complained about him and his friends during a screening of Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince in Leeds. The 46-year-old mother of two had to be treated in hospital after the boy squirted the chemical over her head. He was found guilty of causing grievous bodily harm with intent and will be sentenced in the new year. Tiger Woods' wallet may be a little lighter in the future. As the number of women claiming affairs with the golfer grows, the number of companies once linked to the star has declined. Ollie Price reports on the latest events involving the fallen idol. The bad news continues for Tiger Woods. Consulting firm Accenture have said they are ending their sponsorship of the world's number one golfer, following the revelations about his extramarital affairs. A statement on their website announced... Given the circumstances of the last two weeks, after careful consideration and analysis, the company has determined that he is no longer the right representative for its advertising. Hi, Accenture's Mike. move comes a day after shaving giant Gillette said it would limit Woods' role in its marketing. Other commercial backers such as Nike, Electronic Arts and AT&T have said they are standing by Woods, although the telecommunications company is thought to be evaluating their relationship with him. Fortunately for the 33-year-old, he's believed to be the first sports star to have earned over a billion dollars. So despite the blow to his reputation, he's unlikely to go hungry anytime soon. British investors have welcomed the news that Abu Dhabi is set to give neighbouring Dubai £6 billion to help it out of a debt crisis. All of Barclays, HSBC and Royal Bank of Scotland's shares rose significantly following the announcement. Stock markets around the world wobbled last month when property investment giant Dubai World was forced to put off repaying £16 billion of debt. Well, the biggest gig of the year is fast approaching, but until recently, Eskimo the reindeer was in no fit state to deliver Christmas presents. He was being bullied by his stable mates because his hormones were going wrong. Now, though, thanks to groundbreaking keyhole surgery, he's back to his best. Ben Biddulph reports. Reindeer, as we all know from the song, can be a pretty judgmental bunch. But for Eskimo, it's not his very shiny nose that meant he was always being picked on. It's something even more delicate. No, poor old Eskimo had one of his testicles in the wrong place. So with Christmas fast approaching, a team of vets at Edinburgh Zoo have made him the first reindeer to undergo keyhole surgery, led by expert Roman Pitsy. This has been a very successful operation. We've got this abnormal, quite small testicle out and hopefully the testosterone production in the other testicle will recover if that's been the problem. So fingers crossed, we'll see the difference next Christmas when he forms a new pair of antlers. The offending testicle had grown up into Eskimo's stomach. The vets think that's the reason why his hormones were out of sync. That's why his antlers weren't up to much, why he was a bit submissive. And frankly, it's why the other reindeer thought he was a bit of a Nancy. Eskimo's now back with the rest of the herd. And according to his keeper, Karen Stiven, he's not standing for any nonsense. He's come back and it's just like nothing has happened, it's great. So he'll be back joining in the reindeer games in no time. And with all this attention, no doubt Eskimo will go down in history.
that's all we've got time for this evening. Do click on to youtube.com forward slash ITN News for all the latest video from us. We'll be back tomorrow. See you then.